Welcome Toon Barn fans, this is Mark Morell reporting for Toon Barn and I'm coming at you live from New York Comic Con. And today I'm here with Kevin Shinnick, the award-winning writer and creator of Mad the Animated Series. That I am, that I am. Thanks for having me. Welcome to New York Comic Con. Thank you, I love it. I'm from New York so it's always good to come home. You have a, you have a panel coming up for Robot Chicken, right? right? Yeah, we got a great panel. We're going to preview the uh, season six, and you know we just had our great uh, DC Comics special. So we're going to talk about that and see if everybody liked it, and tell you what what more is coming down the pike. What more is coming for Robot Chicken besides things like say the the DC Comics special? Well, we say we you know we haven't announced, we haven't ironed anything out. But if the DC Comics special did well like it did, we talked about possibly doing another one, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Just like sort of the, the way you did with the Star Wars exactly. trilogy, right? Exactly. We were very fortunate to be able to crack that open with Star Wars. George Lucas basically gave us the permission to do that, and now DC Comics has likened us to do this as well. So, that's awesome. All right, um, I have to uh, I have to ask you. You wear a lot of hats. Can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Um, you know, I was joking that they say that to be a success in this world, you got to pick the one thing you do and do that, and I've ignored that completely. Um, <laughs> I just try and do what interests me, you know. Um, I've been very fortunate to get into certain worlds of writing and acting and whatnot, but once I started getting that, I thought, let me just try and continue to open the doors and see what doors will open to me. So, you know, I was on Robot Chicken, then I left and created Mad, and, uh, and then uh, one of the editors of Marvel saw Mad and really enjoyed it and said, hey, how would you like writing a, a Spider-Man comic? So I jumped on that because I'd love to do that. You're talking about Avenging Spider-Man. I am. I okay. Am. And you're talking about that little story arc that has to do with Deadpool and right. Spider-Man in high school. Yes, exactly. The editor came to me and said, how do you like about Deadpool and, and Spidey in high school? And I thought, I like the sound of it. I don't know what it means because Deadpool wasn't Deadpool when he was in high school and stuff. So I said, let me wrap my mind around it. And then I kind of came up with this Inception type idea that I liked. And so uh, they gave me two issues to tell that story in. And then I thought I got to bring in another heavy hitter. And when I couldn't get a heavy hitter, I thought, let me go comical, and I went and found this character from the 1970s called the Hypno Hustler, who uh, was created to jump on the disco, uh, you know, craze, and so I brought him back. Do you think that that uh, little story arc could ever make it into an animated show or anything like that? You know, I mean, Spider-Man and Deadpool are so, you know, ripe for the pickings that it, I'm sure it could be. In fact, there's a Spider-Man cartoon on now. Um, you know, we kind of do stuff like that at Robot Chicken and on Mad. You know, right now we're when we do Mad, we're kind of commenting on the culture. And a year ago, that might have been all Twilight. This year, it's all superheroes. So, in a sense, we're already doing that. Okay, I uh, noticed in the DC Comics version of uh, Robot Chicken that uh, Mr. Freeze played a big part. And uh, I was just wondering, do you have a, a fascination with the the, the cold villains? <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even think about that. You're right. My first comic book was a 10-page story uh, called What Falls Below, and it involved Mr. Freeze. You're right. Um, then when they asked me what I wanted to do voice-wise for Robot Chicken, I just gravitated towards uh, Captain Cold because I always liked him. I always liked Flash's gallery, rogues gallery, because I thought they were a little bit of a bunch of losers. You know, I thought it would be kind of funny. And then um, Jeff Johns, who, you know, worked with us and, and uh, gave us permission to the show, said that, Captain Cole was always his favorite character. And when I said why, he said because he dressed like I did growing up in Michigan. So I thought, well, fair enough. Everybody has their favorites. Now, did you happen to like the original uh, Batman series, uh, Mr. Freeze, the one from TV with, with Adam West and Burt Ward? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, those were the great. And the great show, thing about that show was they brought in these heavy hitters. And I forget who... I forget who played him, but he was, you know, they had Academy Award winning actors and actresses playing these cheesy, you know, tongue in cheek characters, you know, and so I think it's fantastic that he did that. I loved, I loved Mr. Freeze back then as well. Who, a little tidbit, wasn't known as Mr. Freeze until the Adam West series. He was known, I think, as Mr. Zero or Dr. Zero, and then when the Adam West show came, they called him Mr. Freeze. They thought it had a better sound to it, and the comics kind of adapted that. So, see, a little something you learned here today at New York Comic Con. <laughs> What is it like uh -oh. to work with Seth Green? You know, I was so fortunate to get hooked up with Seth um, for the job, but then he just became family and a good friend. And now those Robot Chicken guys and I, we vacation together, we hang together socially, so it's not even a job anymore. And, you know, that's the whole idea of this business. Uh, Seth believes it, I believe it. You know, you want to work with your friends, and sometimes you make your friends through your work, and then it becomes this symbiotic relationship. You don't know which came first, the work or the friendship, you know? And 
I, you know, I went over to Mad. He's done voices for my show. I do voices for his show. I still write on Robot Chicken. You know, other writers there, we use go back and forth. It's just we're a family. So it's, it's, it's changed my life in so many ways, but all for the better. Well, there's another show that's coming up, and I know it's a long ways out. Okay. But are you involved with Star Wars Detours? <laughs> um, I think it's, yes. I, I'm just wondering if it's been announced, because they, they ask you not to talk too much about it. But yes, I am one of the writers on Star Wars Detours, and that's another example of working with people you enjoy working with. And, you know, George Lucas was so nice to us to let us do our three specials that this is even a greater experience, because we get to work actually with him and, be, and literally beside him. Now, you've met George Lucas, right? Yeah, I mean, like, when I, we went up to, to work on the show, he was there and I was here. I was sitting next to him for the whole amount of time we were up there. And it's just a surreal experience to be pitching story and talking with someone who's not only legendary, but as you might imagine, to anyone, just such a uh, an icon that when he spoke for the first week and a half, all it was like Charlie Brown. All I heard was, because I was thinking, you made Star Wars, you made Star Wars. Eventually... You get to work with them long enough that that goes away and you're like, okay, wait a minute, I'm back. Okay, this is a gentleman who has been very good to us and a nice guy and a super talented person. So, you know, that all falls away once you go up after a number of times. But thank goodness you get to go up a few times because the first eight are just, you know, you're in awe. Cartoon Barn fans out there, uh, they kind of want to know uh, what were your favorite cartoons growing up and what are your, maybe your favorite cartoons now besides Mad, right, besides course, Robot Chicken. Well, you know, uh, growing up, and it's, it was so great to be able to go back and do that Super Friends special or the DC Comics special because the Super Friends really were such a, a Saturday mornings. The entire week just led to that day. It's all I thought about all week. And to, and to not only watch that show and enjoy it, but then to be able to pay homage to it in a humorous way years later was uh, totally coming full circle. You know, I grew up with Scooby-Doo and Tom and Jerry and all those shows and I, I love them to death um, now you know you can't avoid mentioning that the Simpsons kind of cracked that a whole new door wide open with prime time uh, even though the Flintstones was prime time the Simpsons kind of was just an amazing show that I think helped a lot of us put animation back in the spotlight and Simpsons Family Guy, you know all those shows were very influential and what's funny is that animation world that I'm in now it's all very familiar, like I talked about. We were nominated for an Emmy Award for MAD this past season. Um, you know, we were up against Robot Chicken, which I do voices and write for. Uh, you know, Adventure Time, regular show, we share the night, we share the network. We're all friends. We all know each other, so it's more like not... I mean, yes, we all wanted to win, but at the same token, we're like, hey, we all get to go to the same party, you know? So there are a lot of shows that I like, like the ones I mentioned, but that whole world becomes a lot smaller when you start working in it because you realize, oh, God, I like your work. I like your work. I'm glad we get to work together. Now, did you ever think that before The Simpsons came along, there would be a team of writers of, say, like 20 working on a cartoon? It still amazes me because I know, like, Family Guy even have a staff of 15 writers who go away and just work on the non sequitur flashbacks. You know, I, I, that room is incredible. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a little shocking to think about that. So, so it's not like, uh, what was it supposed to be, manatees that are supposed yeah, to come exactly. up with those ideas? No, no if, from what I can tell, there may be a few men. I'm not saying there aren't manatees. I'm just saying they don't work alone. So stop giving all the credit to the manatees. All right, that's cool. Thank you for coming to Comic-Con with us, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the time that you spend here, and we're looking forward to the Robot Chicken panel. Yes, good. Tonight's the Robot Chicken panel, and then um, Saturday I've got a Marvel panel and a Marvel signing if you're around. So Sunday, come and get your comic signed.